What is happening, everyone? This is Jim from RC After Dark. Uh, excuse, the, excuse the mess here, guys. I'm getting ready to move. Uh, many of you guys know that. Um, wanted to talk to you guys real quick today about uh, LiPo batteries, hand warmers, and acclimating your tires to colder temperatures. Uh, let's just get started with the hand warmers and the LiPo batteries. Uh, yes, LiPo batteries can freeze in colder temperatures. And I've seen a lot of comments lately on uh, other people's videos about using hand warmers to keep your LiPos warm. And, uh, or to keep your lipos from freezing. You know, that's a real great idea, guys. It is an awesome idea. And, uh, you know, it's probably the only real option to keep your lipos from freezing in colder temperatures. But uh, one thing to keep in mind, if you're going to do that, you might want to put some insulation, uh, some kind of insulation, whether it be an old sock or a towel or a rag um, or possibly some neoprene foam or something in between your actual lipo battery and the hand warmer. Uh, I don't know if many of you know this or not, but if you read the instructions on the back of the hand warmer packets, um, it does say that they can reach uh, up to 165 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which I want to say is like right around 75 degrees Celsius, um, which is pretty warm. That's a lot of that's that's pretty warm to be sit, warm to be sitting right next to your lipo. Uh, you know, once again, yeah, the the, the hand warmer is going to be outside. It is exposed to the cold temperatures, so it might not hit 165 degrees versus being in your pocket. You know, where it's not necessarily exposed to the uh, colder temperatures and, uh, you know, uh, you know, will hit 165 degrees, but or possibly could hit 165. Uh, the moral of the story, guys, I don't know if you want to have that next year uh, right, right up on your battery. You know, I mean, it's up to you. You can do whatever you guys want to do. There we go right there. Do not apply directly to the skin. Direct contact will result in burns. Hand warmers can reach temperatures of 165 degrees Fahrenheit, 74 degrees Celsius. Skin burns at 111 degrees Fahrenheit, 44 Celsius. So 165, guys. And like I was saying, you might want to put some kind of insulation around your battery or in between your battery and the actual hand warmer. Um, I've got some of this uh, foam here that was like left over from some Boom Racing aluminum wheel packaging. Um, that would probably work pretty good. Uh, you'd probably want to use like two layers of this since it's pretty thin. So you might want to have like two layers of this, you know, in between the battery and the, and the hand warmer. Um, if your battery's laying flat in your truck, um, you're probably going to want to put a hand warmer underneath it and a hand warmer on top of it. Um, those hand warmers aren't exactly, uh, you know, they're not the same size as the battery. Little packet, almost like a tea bag. Um, you know, so in all reality, if you can mount your battery horizontally, it would probably be the best option. You know, and then have some foam on either side of it and a hand warmer on either side of the on either side of the battery. That way you're hitting both cells at the same time. Or even better yet, uh, build some kind of neoprene box or foam box uh, to put your battery in. And then once again, hand warmer on the bottom, hand warmer on the top or one on each side. Definitely want to put some insulation, whether it be an old towel or a, uh, you know, an old sock or something uh, in between the battery and the actual um, hand warmer. Um, you're probably going to want at least like a quarter inch uh, of insulation. Um, I mean, even this little foam right here, that's going to get hot too, and it's probably not going to, it's probably going to transfer the heat pretty good. Um, you know, it might not hit 165 degrees Fahrenheit, but it's still going to be pretty warm. Um, two layers of this foam is, you know, probably roughly a quarter of an inch. So you probably want about a quarter of an inch uh, of foam or something, uh, some kind of insulation in between your battery and the actual hand warmer. Just FYI. All right, guys, moving on. Let's get into acclimating your tires to colder temperatures. A lot of people have covered this on videos, many videos on this. RC Sparks has covered it many times, um, and along with a bunch of other people as well. Uh, but I just want to throw out a quick idea for you guys uh, for plastic, plastic wheels uh, in particular. Uh, metal wheels, aluminum wheels, you know, it would be a, just a matter of uh, loosening up the beadlock, putting your tire in the freezer for a couple hours, um, letting letting the air contract inside the tire, you know, letting the tire acclimate to the colder temperatures, pull the tires out one at a time, and tighten the screws back down as quickly as possible before the tires warm up, or take the tires outside, tighten, tighten them down in the colder temperatures while they're still cold, um, you know, that way the air is, is trapped inside. As soon as the tire starts to warm up, that air is going to expand. Um, so if you're working on a beadlock wheel, uh, you might want to you might want to tighten down the wheels inside that cold environment whether it's out in your garage or outside in the actual cold air uh, For plastic wheels on the other hand uh, 
Most plastic wheels have air holes drilled in the, in the back half of the wheel so the wheel can breathe or so the tire can breathe. Um, some people glue those air holes shut. <laughs> and, uh, like these uh, Proline 2.8 sand paws that are on the TF2, the air holes were previously glued shut for my WL Toys Amphibious project. Um, on this truck, I just drilled one hole in each on each wheel on the back half of the wheel. Drilled one small hole, uh, put the tires in my freezer, let them cool down for a couple of hours, uh, let the air inside contract, pulled the tires out one at a time, and I actually used a hot glue gun uh, to seal the tires back up. Now I want to throw a shout out to one of my viewers, uh, Ryan Shea. He actually made a comment about using a hot glue gun for acclimating your tires to colder temperatures. And you know, it's, you know, I don't know if it's his idea or not, but he left a comment, so I'm going to give Ryan Shea the credit on this one. Uh, all the videos that I've done with the TF2 so far this year, guys, with the paddles on it, is all courtesy of Ryan Shea. Um, I used that idea with a hot glue gun, and you know what? I wanted to try it before I talked about it, and it works, works pretty darn good, guys. Um, I acclimated the tires on the TF2. Ah, oh, man, guys, in December, uh, end, of the, end of December, like probably just after Christmas when I acclimated the tires on the TF2. And uh, they've been holding air ever since. And once again, just use a hot glue gun. Hot glue guns come in a couple different temperatures. There's a lower temperature one, like a hobby grade or craft grade, that uh, I want to say puts out like 185 degrees Fahrenheit at the tip. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. And then there's a warmer temperature glue gun or a hotter glue gun that uh, puts out right around 450 degrees uh, Fahrenheit at the tip. Once again, don't quote me on that. Um, the warmer glue gun would probably be, be the better choice to use uh, just because the glue is coming out hotter. It would adhere better to the plastic um, and make it adhere better uh, out in colder temperatures. Um, I didn't have that option. I actually bought that glue gun about you know a couple days after Christmas, so the stores were pretty much sold out. That was the only one on the shelf. It is a low temperature glue gun. I did use it and it worked excellent, guys. Uh, the tires, like I said, they've been holding it, holding pressure ever since, and um, I've used it, you know, and on several cold occasions. Um, one, uh, I think the coldest temperature that I had it exposed to was negative seven degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, ran it for like 20 minutes, and you know, it held up fine. Uh, the tires were acclimated perfect. So let's just get right into here. Oop, pull off that tire magically. If you can get a good look at the tire, you can see that it's still bowed out, holding air. Tires are expanded because of the warmer air temperature. This tire was previously glued shut once before. You can see the glue hole right up here and another one down in here. If I get the focus here, now here is where I drilled my hole, my new air hole, my new breather hole. I drilled that on an angle, came in on an angle with the drill bit making sure that I didn't poke a hole through the rubber on the tire. Um, no reason for putting on an angle, just easier to get into. And once again, I put the tires in the freezer for a couple hours, let them cool down, and then I pulled the tires out one at a time, making sure that the glue gun was already warmed up and ready to go. You know, it already had glue oozing out of it, so it was good to go. Pulled the tires out one at a time, put the glue gun in the hole, gave it a little squirt. Didn't want to necessarily push glue all the way through the hole. I don't want to have any glue on the inside of the wheel. So I just partially filled the hole, put a little dime sized blob on top. Kids, have your parents do this. Parents, this is very hot, uh, hot glue. Um, I put a dime sized puddle on the top and then just let it cool down for a few seconds and then I smashed it flat with my finger. I work outside guys, I'm pretty used to uh, uh, warm temperatures and uh, you know, different things of that nature. So it didn't really bother me all that bad, but it did burn. Yes, it did burn. So um, parents, once again, you might want to use like a spoon or an old knife or something to kind of flatten that out. Yes, it is probably going to try to stick to the back of the spoon. So you're going to have to do it, uh, you know, pretty quick and carefully at the same time. Uh, but once again, work great guys, little, little uh, blob of hot glue there on the inside. And once again, the tires have been holding air for man, for weeks guys um, you know here we are all the way through January so a whole month these things have been holding there and they're still holding there so excellent idea from Ryan Shea very much appreciated there brother uh, big shout out to you so uh, that's it for right now guys just want to give you the quick little heads up there um, using a hot glue gun to acclimate your plastic wheels to colder temperatures works great warmer hot glue gun would probably work even better and uh, you know if the hot glue comes out 
not a big deal. Throw the tire back in your freezer, hit it with some more glue, and you'll be good to go. And uh, yeah, lasted quite a long time, still holding air. And you know, come summertime, that hot glue is really easy to just peel right off of there. Um, you know, so you can get your, temp your tires back down to normal temperature if you want to reseal them. So, excellent idea. Much appreciated there, Ryan Shea. And uh, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. This is Jim from RC After Dark. I uh, hope these little tips and uh, tidbits helped you out. And we'll see you on the next video.